We just saw how you could multiply probabilities for two events that occur. And we're still going to keep doing the same thing, but now we're going to look at not just independent events, where it doesn't matter what happened on the first event. We're going to look at dependent events. So what is that? If the probability of a second event is affected by the outcome of the first event, then the events are dependent. All right, so, oh, I did something here, now that's changing the probability for the second thing. The most common example of that is when we have events that occur without replacement. And so I'll explain what I mean there. In this example, we're going to determine which set of events is dependent. Well, there's a, if I draw a marble from an urn and then I put it back and draw a second marble, did I change the probability? No, because I basically replaced it. So it's okay. The first, if I, as long as I put the marble back, I didn't change the probability for the second marble. If I roll a die or draw and draw a card, that one rolling the die and the cards, they're not talking to each other. So those are independent events. All right. Now, if I draw two marbles from an urn and the words aren't there this time, but if I said I'm taking two marbles, so I'm kind of keeping them together. If I draw one marble from the urn, I've suddenly changed not only how many might be left of that color, but also the total number of marbles in the urn. So these are dependent events. If I roll the die twice, it's not like the die says on the next one, choice D. Um, oh, you got a four, so you better not get a four again. The die doesn't pay attention to what was rolled before. That is independent. I'm going to show you a quick proof, the multiplication rule for dependent events. You won't have to prove it, but to see what happens here. So we have, um, given the conditional probability formula from the prior lesson. And if I multiply both sides um, by probability of A, right? So I can say that I, that the probability of A and probability of A on the right side here, these two are going to cancel, right? It's by simplifying to give me this. So it tells me that I can still multiply my probabilities even when events are dependent. It's just that the second probability might be a little different than the first probability or what you would get the first time around. In this example, I have a deck of 52 cards and have a, a deck has four types of each card. In this case, four types of jacks, four jacks. So I'm going to determine the probability that two jacks are drawn from a deck of cards without replacement. So how do I do that? Well, the first jack, there are four of them and there are 52 cards but I'm going to keep that jack out, right? What's going to happen to the probability for the second one? Well, the first one is four out of 52. The second one, there's one less jack, so it's three, and there's one less on the total card, so that's 51. Um, so that's basically your answer. I'm going to go ahead and simplify these and multiply them. So you can see that the probability of drawing two jacks in a row is actually kind of low. In this next example, I'm going to calculate the probability that a blue and then a red marble are drawn without replacement. So I'm keeping the marbles out of the urn. I know there are three blue marbles, two red and one yellow. So how many total marbles? There are six marbles. And so the probability of drawing a blue on the first one should be three out of six. What happens to the probability for the red? So I have three out of six for the blue marble. Now there are only five marbles left, and of those, two are red. So I'm going to go three out of six times two out of five. Now some of you may be tempted to say, oh, I just go down by one every time. On the totals, you probably do. The only reason this goes down one is because I had two to start. If I had said blue and then yellow, that two would be a one. So don't just automatically go down by one. Then I'll just multiply my probabilities and simplify, and I have a 1 in 5 probability. Okay, last but not least, let's look at the multiplication rule for independent events. And we kind of deduced it from uh, using inductive reasoning. We saw the pattern. And we know the probability of A times the probability of B given A is the probability of B and A. And that's a conditional uh, probability formula. Actually, that's from last time. And then we just substitute it in. So we know that if it's independent, probability of B given A is just the probability of B. 
So for, the for further reflection, what is the difference between independent and dependent events? You should know the difference. And why should replacing an object, if, um, why should replacing an object affect it if the probabilities are, uh, affect if the probabilities are independent or dependent? And then finally, how are the multiplication rules related for independent and dependent events?